We met the players, but now it's time to find out what makes them tick. I mean, why vintage? Does reminiscing improve mood? Does it give us a sense of identity, of belonging? Is it a coping mechanism? Neuroscience says yes to all the above. You know what I'm talking about. When you see something from your childhood or smell a familiar smell, you get that warm, fuzzy feeling, and that's the power of reminiscence. But don't take my word for it. Roll the tape. Nostalgia serves a main purpose for people, and that's to conjure up positive emotions of the past. And there's a landmark study by Alan Hirsch, and he showed nostalgia corresponds not only to the specific memory, but more to the emotions that it conjures. Nostalgia is really like time travel. I think it's things you, you look fondly back on. Connecting with that moment in your childhood that you have a great memory. It's a pleasant feeling. It's a familiar feeling. It's like a nice, warm, comfortable blanket. You kind of remember a certain period of it, but you don't necessarily remember all the terrible things that happened at the same time. Like, it's a selective memory. Yeah. Yeah, it's home. Oh, that's deep. Oh, home. <laughs> 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 that was nostalgia. Yeah. 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 Hamburgers were 20 cents. Roast beef sandwich was 15. Onion rings, 25 cents. French fries were 20 cents. Milkshakes, 25 cents. And I can remember doing all that purchasing as a kid. 10 cents on your Coke machines. I can remember when Coke was only 7 cents. You could go to a movie for 10 cents, buy a bag of chips out of your quarter. No, no, it goes from pennies to dollars now. Some people are out there trying to recapture their youth by buying. So when you're 15, you're relying on your parents to buy stuff for you, but then all of a sudden you're 35, now you have money, you can spend it on whatever you want. It's the Captain America movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see that because I never got that when I was a kid. Yeah. So I'm going to spend all my money force my kids to like it. I think we do look forward to our futures, but a lot of us hold on to our pasts. You like to have those memories maintained in some way, and, and having something like a, a monkey's mobile toy keeps it tangible. We used to play dress up in my grandmother's lingerie. <laughs> and it takes me back to those moments because there was no care. We get to role play and it was fun. I never want to let go of the young, carefree girl that I was. Everybody's a prisoner of a decade in particular. With me, it would be the late 70s, early 80s. 1955 to 1965. The 80s and the 90s, because I was born in the 70s. The stuff that's really important to you when you're 14 is going to be really important to you for the rest of your life. Everybody has a little trigger. NWO, man. When I see things from 90s wrestling, I'm all in. I don't watch wrestling and haven't in 10 years, but you know, several years ago there were wrestlers from this period like coming back and I was like, oh, maybe I should watch wrestling again. T-shirts, I have like one million t-shirts. When I go to a thrift store, I am looking for a specific thing that's gonna trigger Amy in the 90s. I did just buy uh, some 80s G.I. Joe toys off <laughs> eBay the other day. Uh, for my daughter, the other night, I listened to like three Wu-Tang albums back to back, full blast on my patio. Oh, thank you, T-shirt. It's TGIF. So if I could go on on a Friday night and watch an episode of Full House and okay. Family Matters and Boy Meets World, I'm set. I don't believe that you don't do that. All right. Oh, I've watched Boy Meets World <laughs> yeah. several times, and I was very upset when they canceled Girl Meets World. I'm okay with letting go of the past, but I need to hold on to it in some way to remind myself of who I am. As I've gotten older and as the market sort of changed, I realized that things are really sort of upping in prices, especially when it's coming into mainstream markets and stuff. It's like 
this stuff is so expensive and I used to spend like no money on it and um, yeah so I'm sort of just sort of having to surf over the top of the market sort of trying to find things before they become mainstream so I'm uh, that's why I maybe that's why I collect everything is because I'm sort of trying to get to it before everyone else does yeah. my, my friend and I Freya and I uh, who's on exchange in Belgium at the moment uh, we write letters we've over the past year we've sent probably around 200 letters so I mean for international postage that's 250 a stamp so it's another sort of expenditure which is unnecessary but you know I I write a lot of letters Freya and I as I say we sort of exchanged over 200 letters this past year, so. Have you ever, like, looked at how much you spend in total, or would that scare you too much? Don't say that sort of stuff, no. It's not the value of the item so much as it is the find and the thrill to possibly own it. It's a really crazy feeling when I see something that I need to have. The rush is almost indescribable. I try to like talk myself down before I go to like a sale because I get so much anxiety about missing out on something. I'm pretty sure that if we were to do a scientific study, it would be like a drug. You'd find that item and you'd be like, oh my God, and you get the endorphin rush and you pay for it and you run back, put it in the car and go, yes, just shaking, so excited that you, you managed to find that. You're gonna take that and you're gonna be proud of that. You're gonna go home and, you know, with your girlfriends, maybe you're out shopping as a group. One time I bought a wedding dress, a veil, the shoes, and a picture of the bride in the dress. I just I could not buy it. I'm always looking, what's just outside of the spotlight? What's what's just lurking on the edge, you know? What's what's waiting to be discovered? I have been at a sale and seen someone like pick something up and thought like, oh my gosh, I must have that. It is like a panic sets over me and I like can't breathe and I just think, that cool, that cool. And then try and, you know, calmly like say, oh, so like how much is this? and then get the best price for it and bring it home. <laughs> That's the sort of reward thing for finding this stuff. You go out, you're just looking for the next big thing, right? I've been known to cry in thrift stores. Um, it, every now and again, I find something I'm like, I can't believe that I've just found this. Probably seven to 10 times a week, I get that feeling when I, when I pick something up. It's super exciting. I totally don't need drugs. My mom and I, totally share this passion. She lives vicariously through, through Bridget, me. Yeah. But if we see something we like, we get it. They're so neat. We'll take photos of everything in all the boxes and then we'll get in the car and then we'll talk, like we'll go through every single item on the way home and like relive like, oh my God, can you believe that? I know exactly where that's gonna go. You know, I'm gonna hang that up. I'm never gonna wear it. I'm not gonna touch it. You know, it's gotta, it's gotta have its own little place. Those are treasures. Those are moments that people invest in and would like to have in their closets and in their wardrobes, you know, for a very long time. Because it'll never go out of style. It's such a feeling of euphoria when you can find that and just have it and know that this is mine forever. And I love that feeling. Clothing then, uh, as, as we understand, they were made for a function. So bucket hoops or any of those were used for, you know, being in an orchard and picking apples or whatnot. It had a function and a purpose. They weren't just designed and made for just style, unless it's the king's court, and then it, that serves a purpose for status. I like to keep some history because it tells a story. I really love having a shop where people can come in and they can find things that excite them like they excite me. The best part of what I do is hearing people's reactions. I get a lot of people just kind of squealing over the clothes. <laughs> They'll pick up an item and just be like, oh, oh my God, you know, this is just beautiful. I'm just like swooning. I really get excited when they start relating to all of the things their father, or their grandfather, or their uncle, their mother, or their aunt, or somebody had or has. I sell soap, and one of my soap flavors is patchouli seaweed. And as soon as she came in and smelled it, she said, oh, patchouli, oh, this just reminds me of the 60s. And she started going like this, like I could just see her with the flowers in her hair going back to like 1968. 
and she bought two bars. When they do find those things and they react, you know, big reactions from it, it makes me really happy to know that I was able to bring the object and the person together and have that kind of magic happiness. Somebody's going to connect to every item that I find, I just have to find that person. I don't binge on it because I, I find that it would lose this kind of special quality somehow. Like, like I'm kind of jealous of somebody tasting it for the first time, even if they don't like it, which is off, you know often the case. Here, I'll pour you out a little bit. Thank you. See what you think? Okay. Oh, it smells like root beer, but different. Yeah. Kinda like root beer mixed with cough syrup. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Cough. People say it has a medicinal taste. I like it. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. It's not bad. Okay, there's an aftertaste. <laughs> Cher cherry See? cough syrup. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it has like, I find it has a before taste, a during taste, and an aftertaste. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like beer or wine. Like there's several tasting notes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like, it's the super complex soda pop. Well, so, you know, after hearing about this obscure weird thing, to actually try it is kind of a fun experience. Thoughts? Doesn't taste like root beer to me. I can't <laughs> put my finger on it. I like it. Yeah. I like to think I have moxie. You know, a certain chutzpah, a spirit, a lamb, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, and it kind of stands for individuality, which is, I'm sure, something I've strived for for all these many years. I mean, you don't collect parrots and scooters without thinking you're some sort of weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Ah, it's good, Moxie.